What is up everyone? Thanks for coming by. You asked for it and we are delivering it. We are going to give you a look into beginning musky fishing. Yep. How to get started. It is kind of a daunting task. There's yeah. not one source where you can look at and be like, wow, this is what I got to do to get on the water and start musky fishing. And that's what we're going to hopefully do today. Just get every yeah. basis covered. I'm going to break it down yeah. for you. Yeah. Right. It's quite, it's really quite simple and it, it's easy to make it uh, more than it is yep so we're just gonna try to keep it simple and uh you know they're a fish it's a fish <laughs> it's they're, not yeah everybody no. says it's a fish of ten thousand casts there's a lot of no. i don't know legendary it's a legendary fish but it's just it, it is a fish and uh we're gonna try to make this simple quite honestly they're probably the dumbest fish in the lake uh yep. in my opinion yep. um but with that said let's dive into you know maybe one of the more boring parts of the whole thing but you know what this is a necessity, Hands so down. don't fast forward past this. You're gonna need to know this stuff. Yep. Um, so number one thing I would say would be a long pair of pliers. Yeah. Like that. Um, the fresher you keep the pliers, uh, what you know, oiled and whatnot, the better. Nothing worse than grabbing a pair of pliers and it's frozen Can't shut. Open it. Yeah. <laughs> a little WD-40 every now and then. Uh, but this is just a you know a whatever length 10 inch or whatever pair of pliers It's got a cutting edge there, which will work for a while and then it won't then anymore. it'll rust out eventually But a nice long pliers you don't want to be so close to the teeth because that's what they have They have teeth not only teeth there are three aught five aught seven aught treble hooks sticking out of their Hanging face everywhere um, Especially this is, with these kind of baits. Yeah, you yeah. want to be away from them yeah, those can be an issue. Uh, another thing this will work good for is if you're catching like a little small pike grabs your bait and you obviously don't want to stick them in the big musky net. Um, without pulling them in the boat, you're just going to reach over the side and just, you know, try to get that hook out if it's easily to mm -hmm. come out. But uh, so there you go. That's one item that yep. you'll need. And probably number two important that a lot of people really don't have in their boxes is yeah. a hook cutters. This saves fish, hands down. It will save fish. It'll just make the unhooking process so much faster. It'll save you. Save, yeah, right. I mean, it hasn't happened to me. I don't think it's happened to you where you had to cut a nope. hook out of your hand, but nope, that's that, not. That can happen, um, but you need these. <laughs> Basically, yeah, it's a compound bolt cutter, and uh, that particular item is a ripoff of the popular Nipex brand. Yep. Um, and we'll uh, obviously, we'll be leaving links to all this stuff yep. down in the description. But compound bolt cutter. Yeah. We'll cut your hooks. But if you want to step up and get the nipex, I don't blame you there either. I was looking for a hook to cut, but literally you can go through a hook with one hand uh, with that tool. Like so. butter. <laughs> Probably the same kind of thing. Uh, a jaw spreader. Especially if you're by yourself and you don't have anybody helping you on hooking a fish, this can come in handy. Open that mouth for you and uh, you know get the hooks out a lot easier, especially if they're hooked deep. One thing I like to do, or I haven't done it for a while, I don't know why, but I used to have one of these tied to my net. So, and it would just kind of stick onto the net. I would just close it around the net, tied to it, because the fish shakes, this thing's going in the lake. Yeah, they fly. That's just like other sure. things yeah. will go into the lake. Yep. Um, so there's another trick, tie, you know, tie a little rope or, like the players, they have this little lanyard here. <laughs> Use it, otherwise yeah, you might buy another pair. Right, right. <laughs> All right, the next item we've got for you is a split ring plier. Yeah. So when you've cut your hooks off out of the fish, you need a brand new hook on. This is the tool you need to put a new hook on your bait, on your split ring. Uh -huh. I was very happy when I started musky fishing that I got one of these tools right away. Didn't mess around, got one of these things. It just makes everything so much faster. Otherwise, you're digging with your fingernails. Lee can do it with his fingernails. I can't. Uh, it's a, definitely a necessity um, in the boat. And you know what? There's all kinds of them out there. Get this one. Yeah. This I build. I've built twenty thousand lures. This is the only one that works very, very, very well. Because yeah, sometimes this has a really skinny uh, nose on there, or what the, the tooth. I don't know what you would want to call it, but if you get some some brands, it's so thick that'll actually ruin your split ring when you're putting it on. That's true. And That's a good that'll point. that'll weaken it and. And that could really be a bad situation and you could lose a fish and hurt a fish from it so it's called a Xeron X-U-R-O-N there you have it because um, yeah you don't want to just for sure don't want to open your split ring super super wide maybe we can even show that 
Because then your hook could actually go back come into out. and yeah. then swivel around and actually come off yeah. the split ring. So maybe um, we'll show that. Okay, so why don't we just show you quick how to change a hook on a bait. You're going to take your split ring plier. I like to have it tooth facing upward. I don't know. That's just what I'm used to. Stick it in between. Wedge it in there and just spin it around. There you just pop your hook off. Obviously this hook is good. One thing I like to do is actually keep a box with pre-sharpened hooks ready to go. So when you cut your hook and you need a new one, as soon as you put that new one on, it's already pre-sharpened. So that's another good tip. Have a box of hooks with you know all different sizes you know maybe down the road that's where you'll want to want to get but you know starting out just knowing the basics of replacing a hook is 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 pretty simple but important all right moving on to one of the most important tools in your boat the hook sharpener this is a lure jensen brand hook sharpener as you can see it's got some rust on it the way to prevent that is to just spray a little WD-40 on it every now and then. The rustier it gets, the worse of bite it's going to have, and it's just not going to work as well. Um, but at any rate, uh, and don't step on them because they'll break. Uh, I'm not going to go through this in depth, but basically uh, any brand new hook you get on a brand new bait is not sharp. They typically need to be sharpened. and. Uh, uh, probably the biggest misconception or biggest mistake I see people make is they take the file and they put the angle way too sharp. You want to have it really low against the point and just give it, you know, a once around like this. And actually, we have a full length video, feature video on how to sharpen a hook like this. But once you get it sharp, it should just stick right in your fingernail just like that. Then you know you've got a sharp point like that. Uh, we'll leave a link to that video uh, in the description as well, how to properly sharpen a hook. But uh, hook file, yeah, you got to have that. That's number, almost probably number one other than a pliers. Last but not least, the net. The big musky net, your big musky live well after you hook a fish or land a fish. Uh, this is crucial. You need it. You just. It, you just need it. Yeah. I, I mean, don't care if you're shore fishing. You really, need this thing. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's safe for the fish. It's just better. I mean, it is an investment. It's a lot of money, but you just need it. It's just one of those things of musky fishing that you need. And um, it's just important for fish to keep getting bigger and catching them again and again. Yes. So. Uh, what the, why is it different? How is it different than an, another, just like a big net, a salmon net? Well, it's a lot thicker, you know, mesh which uh, kind of helps, you know, in getting the, you know, less fin tear and whatnot on the fish. It's also typically got a rubberized coating, which helps prevent the hooks going into uh, the netting material, which obviously is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, and the bigger, nice, thick mesh and the rubber coating keeps it a little more rigid to where the fish will tend to spin up less in the bag. Yeah, so yeah you get a super skinny bag, the, the rolling and stuff yeah. when you get a, when you get a, a hook with or a bait with three different treble hooks on it, that fish rolls up. It's a problem. That's where a hook cutter comes uh, very nice too. Um, but yeah, nice long handle. So yeah, this this net here, this is a pretty standard. Uh, this is the Frabel Power Catch net. Um, it, they make one size bigger, the Big Kahuna. Yep. Uh, it is big. It's giant. It, it's it's the Minnesota net is what we call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a much more manageable size, that's for sure. Um, especially when you're fishing by yourself. Yeah. Yep, it's a little more manageable. But, so, um, that's the net we've been using. Uh, it, it's lasted for, I don't know, quite it's, a while. It's been a while, yeah. Uh, Drifter makes some other nets. Yep. There's uh, the RS nets. Yeah, yep. yep. Uh, there's a few it. choices out there. Yep. But uh, just make sure it's got the good rubberized coating on there. That's the big thing. Yep. So one other short little thing we want to mention is make sure you have a place designated that you can actually lock your your net down in the boat once you've netted a fish. Yep, like a bungee um, in my boat, I've got uh, straps on my seats where I just kind of fold it down and works real nice. Because if you're by yourself, you don't want to be holding the net while you're reaching for pliers, reaching for tools. It's just a lot easier. Lee's got a little system back here. I don't have it with me, but or, I don't know, it's probably here. But just a Velcro or a bungee will work right here to just lock it down. That's over the side of the boat, fish is contained. Don't have to mess with it. Uh, we have yeah. a video that goes through on how to hook, unhook a muskie, um, everything you need to know. We're gonna leave that link in the description as well. Check that um, out. Yeah. 
check that out as well. Yeah. So that's the program. Uh, with the gear, the, the basic tools, essentials, hook out, uh, safety of the fish, a uh, glove. A glove is good oh, too. Oh wow, <laughs> I just There's saw one. It. Might want one of these when it's your first time touching a muskie. Uh, they're kind of scary. <laughs> I still wear them. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel like getting cut up and having to take the time to put a band-aid on yep. if I'm cut bad or whatever. So. Um, Get a glove. Um, it'll save you your time and blood and stuff like that. Bandages. Yeah, that one there, that's a Lindy fish handling glove. Uh, we could put a link for that too. Uh, or you could just get some, like a baseball type glove mm -hmm. if you have one of those, or golf, or yep. just something to cover up your hands a little bit. But simple enough. I think that's it for the tools wise. I think we might come back to it. I don't know. Uh, what's next? Baits or gear? Baits or rods? Uh, Alright, moving along to the fun stuff. We've got here the 9 foot Chaos Tackle Assault Stick in the SWAT model. And this is the 9 foot Telescope. Okay, so telescoping. Man, nice. <laughs> I said it 25 years ago. This is what all musky rods need to be. Yep. Uh, this is what they're becoming now. Finally. <laughs> Yeah, this is the extra heavy action, which pretty much will cover the widest variety of lure sizes yep. for you. From top water to regular size medusas, you can get away with it. Um, that's what smaller you need. bucktails, right, smaller bucktails, bigger bucktails. Um, these have uh, about a two hundred dollar price point, which is quite reasonable for as high a featured mm -hmm. rod as this. Um, obviously, the telescoping is a, a giant feature of the rod. The extra long handles, that's one thing about less expensive, cheap, or a lot of you know entry level musky rods don't have this long handle, uh, which it makes it really yeah. hard to cast. Yeah. Yep, makes it nice. Uh, one of the probably the biggest mistake I made going into musky fishing is I got an eight foot musky rod. Literally, I don't know, probably a year after that, I was like, wow, I would like a nine foot rod. So it's just cheaper in the long run. Go with, you know, spend the extra money get what you're gonna want I mean, eventually, eventually down the yes. road so I don't know I, that's all I use now it's nine foot rides <laughs> right but for those of you that just can't stomach that just can't afford it it's not in your budget start with what you can get there's a lot of entry-level musky rods out there Shimano makes a yeah. Sojourn I think uh, uh, like seven and a half footer they're well on they're under a hundred bucks yep uh, comp so. is just yep. another step above that as well. What are those, 130, 140 probably, uh, I think? I think tops, I think yeah. they're, yeah, that's so, at the most. That's another route that you can take um, as well. So there's definitely options where you don't have to spend as much, but. This uh, is where you're gonna wanna be. Yeah, so if eventually. You, if you can save up enough money or whatever, this, you know, this is probably what you're gonna wanna get into. Okay, moving on to reels. You've seen that we like to use the Tranks 400 uh, this has been a pretty darn solid reel. Yeah. The fact, uh, you know, it is so small, compact, uh, comes in two speeds. Uh, one retrieves 30 inches of line per crank. One retrieves uh, 40 inches of line per crank. Um, this is kind of a debate. Yeah. Which speed to get? Um, you know, like, because the fast reel when you're retrieving things with a lot of pull, like a bucktail, mm. it's a lot of resistance. So I don't know. Uh, my opinion. That's a tough call. Yeah, my opinion. Last year I threw just the, the slower model a lot more, and this year I'm throwing the high speed a lot more. I don't know. I, it's, it's kind of more of a, a personal yeah, yeah. personal preference. Um, but I kind of do like the slower one, especially for top water uh, baits that move slow. But you know, if, if you're to just get one, the high speed's nice. The high speed is kind of nice. nice. You can always slow down. You can always slow down, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so the high speed one comes with the uh, uh, the big single handle, so that's how you tell the difference between that. Um, but yeah, that's the Tranks 400. Uh, that's a lot of reel, a lot of capacity, and a very small package. Super comfortable, mm -hmm. uh, nice. quite reliable too. So another option, if you're just starting out, don't have a big budget. Uh, this is the Cardiff 400 right here. I've had a lot of experience with this reel actually. It was one of my first musky reels I've, I got. Uh, it was actually very solid for the price, 120 bucks. Uh, gets you in the door for musky fishing. It's got a clicker if you're gonna do suckers. I mean, it's 
it's a slow reel, um, but it's gonna get the job done if you don't wanna spend $300, which $300 is a lot of money. Um, this comes in yeah. at 120, I yep. see it's marked at on here. We borrowed this from the local shop, thanks Gene over at DNS. Yep. But um, uh, 120 bucks, man. I, I mean, I, man, it, this is the reel that my dad used a lot when we were just getting into the musky fishing and put a lot of hours on it and they actually yep. work pretty dang good. It's, it's a great top water reel. Um, Jerk baits and yep. stuff. Sliders. I mean, you're not going to be burning double tens, double nines on it, but you yeah. can you can reel a single a uh, single nine or a single ten pretty it's just, it's for just sure. slower. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, musky on a budget. Uh, that's a good bet for you for the reel. All right. So the line we're using. Uh, this is a super braid type line. This is uh, 80 pound. This is the Power Pro Super Slick V2. Uh, you'll notice we like bright line. Yeah, that's uh, that's nice. a common question. <laughs> No, it does not scare the fish. <laughs> that's probably the most, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. They, if, it's a dumb fish. If they're eating bucktails at boat side, a foot away from your boat, I think I think the line's not gonna matter. With your rod swishing <laughs> in the water, yeah, they're not concerned yeah, about so the Yeah, so don't worry about that. It's just nice to see your line. When, I mean, there's other people, so you're not crossing each other or whatnot. I yeah, <laughs> that's a big advantage. Yeah, just knowing where everybody's line is in the boat, that's a big advantage. For night fishing, it's, it's really nice. Um, you know, it comes in, obviously, a, a dark green is probably the most popular. Yeah but it's hard to see where everyone's lying. So yeah, so that's an 80 pound uh, super braid like that, uh, whatever brand you like, whatever you want to use. But uh, I don't know, we like the bright stuff. Yeah. So. so if you guys are really balling on a budget here, say you already bass fish or pike fish, you probably have uh, like a seven, six flipping stick frog and rod. This can get you through. It can catch you a muskie, yes. um, but as long as you have the right tools and everything, you just want to make sure that muskie's going to be safe. Um, yeah, and let's say here, let's take this point this time to, okay, if you're going to take your bass flip and stick, you're going to go try to catch a muskie. Don't do it without those tools that we showed yep, you. Yep. you got to have be prepared. But for those of you that can't go buy that big fancy muskie set up yep. right away, that flip and stick. Get a leader, get a nice amount of leader, nice strong snap. Um, fluorocarbon works, yeah, just throw, you can throw a spinner bait. That's all you need for a muskie, really. <laughs> spinner bait, top notch bait for sure. Yep. Uh, I've got 50 pound braid on this. A lot of you probably have 50 pound braid on your heavy stick, bass stick, maybe even 65 pound yep. braid, better yet. But uh, that's an option if you're really starting out as well. Yeah, so this rig here, this is the Corrado K reel, uh, seven to one retrieve. That's a seven foot five uh, heavy action. Yeah, uh, I think it can handle a big muskie, right? <laughs> you know, muskies, <laughs> as mean as they're cracked up to be, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're not like a super long, hard fighting mm -hmm. fish. It's over in like yeah, 20 minute, seconds. Right, right, a minute at the longest. I, I got to experience a nice big muskie on this setup, so oh, you can get wow. her done. <laughs> so yeah. don't, it, it, this, hey, yeah. <laughs> this is as big a fish as you can catch yep. on this outfit. Maybe let's yeah, look let's at this look. fish now. Yeah. yeah, that one was on this rod here, so it can handle a big fish. Yep. But yeah, I mean, having the right tools, right net, that made that job a lot easier than if you had a small net, that would have probably never happened. <laughs> For sure. All right, so we showed you the SWAT rod, the extra heavy, which like we said, will pretty much cover everything. Uh, it's the three to 10 ounce lure weight model recommended on that rod. Uh, let's say you want to branch out and do some other, you know, kind of expand your arsenal, have different rods for different techniques. Uh, this one here is the nine foot surgical strike. And that is basically a medium heavy or an extra heavy. And so there you have it. Glide bait rod, awesome glide bait rod, good twitch bait rod, uh, choppers, top water rod. You know, probably upwards, double eights is probably where you want to end with blades. Um, yeah. Single eight, bucktail, like this is like the perfect setup for all. It's a pretty wide range of lures, but yeah, all, yeah the you, smaller stuff. The smaller stuff. A mini Medusa you could do on this. Yep. Um, that'd be definitely the limit right there. Yeah, Micro Dragon throws this really nice on this rod. Uh, small trilogies. Just smaller stuff. Top water, smaller blades, yep. twitchers, yep. glides. That's the surgical strike. Yep. Your finesse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's call it your finesse musky rod.
So like we explained before, the, the SWAT model, the nine foot SWAT, or they even make a nine foot six as well. Um, definitely the best all around like we explained before. Yeah. Such a wide variety of lure weights, uh, three to 10 ounces is the recommendation. Yep. So Poseidons, regular Medusas, mid Medusas, uh, double nines. I mean, if you're talk if if you really want a blade rod, a nine foot swat would be pretty much perfect. Double tens, it'll handle really nice. Double nines. Um, the boiler makers. Boiler makers. Big boiler. Big diving rises. If I didn't say that, you know, regular like the the medium size uh, dragons. Pretty covers much. a lot of baits. <laughs> yeah, that and that's why that's the rod that right. I would pick. You know, for pretty much you know, if you had one set up, that'd be the deal. If you had to throw top water on it, you can obviously do that as well. So it covers everything. Just not the giant stuff. So that's what we need to get into next. Big nine foot shock and awe. The big bad boy right here. Husky Medusas, Monster Medusas. If you're getting into like size 12. Um, Blades, Blades. If, yeah, like if you really want to go big. And let me say here too, uh, we just happen to have this, uh, uh, this is with the Tranks 500, which is the larger size. Everybody says, oh, this reel's too, too big. big. <laughs> Come on, I have the world's smallest yeah, hands. Yeah. And if, yeah, I if, can palm this. Yeah, if Lee and I can do it, if we can throw this reel. Um, it's time to man up. <laughs> what, when did I get my first tranks? I was, I think I was 18. I bought a used one, still using the same tranks today. Yeah. Uh, best investment in musky fishing that I had because I'm still using it and yeah. for ripping rubber, just abuse after abuse. I mean, it's the reel that goes latest into the year because it's not breaking because of ice. It's, it doesn't break. It's pretty crazy reel. Um, yeah, if you want to save up for a reel that's not going to break on you, that's the reel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Big rubber, big blades, and, and let me say too, the, the advantage, why such a big reel? The advantage of the big reel is that it has a much larger spool, which gives you a lot more power, and when you want to really move a blade yeah. fast, this is it. This is like really the only yeah, that can handle it. sweet option out there for that. So if you if you really want to burn blades, uh, I definitely recommend the nine foot shock and all because that tips a little, doesn't move as much as a SWAT. So if you really want to be burning blades, this is the setup that you want. <laughs> yeah, what is the lure weight recommendations on the shock and all? Let's take a look here. Uh, this happens to be the nine six, which is what I do all my just bucktailing with. Uh, obviously you can rubber fish with yeah, it too. Four to 24 ounces so Ooh. that's yeah <laughs> yeah you got any 24 ounce baits <laughs> pound and a half baits yeah. uh, at your service right there so. so that covers it all those are all the different models we use uh, eventually in your musky career you're gonna want different variations of rods um, come back to this video and there you go all right so the really fun part uh, this can get complicated if you let it but you really don't need to all right let's take a look at the different lure styles that are available out there We've got spinners, or we call them bucktails. I know they're not bucktails anymore. All right, so another style of bait is a jerk bait. We've got a couple different styles. One is a glide bait, this, which means it's a glide, it glides side to side like that. It's angler imparted action to the bait. Uh, another style of jerk bait is a dive and rise jerk bait. This is the uh, Lee Lures Leviathan. This is the Shum Quickie. Uh, it's got the rubber tail, that's kind of cool. It's always moving, working for you. Uh, let's see, another lure style we've got here is a minnow bait. Definitely, uh, you know, probably where I started fishing artificial lures, the first one I ever used was a, a Zarapola, you know, minnow bait for smallmouth. Obviously, muskies like those too. This is the Custom X, six and three quarter inch CXT. Uh, there's all different shapes, sizes, thicknesses of minnow baits. Um, let's see, what else we got? Rubber baits, that's definitely high on the list. We throw a lot of rubber baits. This happens to be a, a Medusa. Uh, another style rubber bait would be a swim bait like this. That is the Poseidon. You've seen us use a lot. Definitely a, a staple item. And uh, let's see here. We've actually even got, a almost forgot here, an offshoot of a bucktail. We've got a trilogy. This is a, a different kind of spinner blade. If you really are a total novice, beginner, uh, this thing always spins. One thing about bucktails, sometimes they don't, if you got someone that doesn't fish at all, 
this is really a nice option because it always spins automatically. You don't have to hit the blade to get it to go. Okay, another style of bait. This is kind of a different one here. This is, uh, if you're a bass fisherman, you'll be very familiar with uh, chatter type baits. This is the TNA Tackle uh, uh, Micro Dragon. You got someone that is not real good at fishing, just throw this thing out, reel it in. It, it always works. Uh, that's an, another option. Let's see, what else we got here? Oh yeah, almost forgot. The most fun style of all lures, topwaters. Muskies are a sucker for topwater baits. Uh, this happens to be a water chopper, one that I, that I make. Um, you could use a whopper plopper as well. That would be a cheaper option. Uh, same basic concept of tail rotating bait, like so. Makes a bunch of noise on top. Um, very loud, aggressive bait. And this bait would be the opposite. This is uh, called a flap tail. Um, there's a few brands out there that make flap tails. This is a very subtle bait, super subtle. Uh, when the muskies are not chasing aggressively, it's a bait that, uh, um, it's finesse muskie fishing, let's call it. Very slow, very quiet. So that's kind of the basics of the different styles of baits that are available uh, today. You know, they all catch fish. Um, you know, you can catch fish on a Barbie doll. So, there, you know, there's no rules, but probably a good way to start out would be just kind of maybe one bait of each kind of style or even just half of these, you know. Um, got a top water, uh, a bucktail, um, you know, something rubber or, you know, maybe you want to try a minnow bait because that's real familiar, uh, throwing smaller stuff, husky jerks or whatever. Uh, just a few things like that and you'll kind of pick and choose, you know, your favorite that you're most confident with. They'll all work and, you know, yeah, certain times, certain baits outperform others, but often I, I wonder myself, okay, so I just caught a fish on this bait, would that fish have bit another bait? Quite possibly. So obviously there's times they do get tuned into certain uh, actions like a glide bait or the stop and go of a minnow bait. Experimentation, there's no rules, you know, there, there's no, uh, the muskies didn't read a book how, you know, how and what they're supposed to bite, when, at what water temperature. And, you know, it's really interesting. Some of the times I have fished with beginners, they end up working a lure no certain way that I would ever work a bait and they're successful at it. So there's no right or wrong way. So keep that in mind, you know, just experiment. That's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, if you got half a dozen lure, lures, rifle through them, you know, every, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, change a bait, you know, until you get a reaction and try to remember how you got that reaction on what style bait. What were you doing with that bait? How were you working it? Uh, like, I'm just gonna keep hammering on this. There's no right or wrong. Just get out there, throw some baits in the lake. The muskie's gonna tell you whether they like it or not. So, there you have it on baits. All right, so real quick, we'll just run through some basic tackle storage, storage options. Uh, this is the pedestal pal. You can actually put your bump seat through here. You know, if you got a bump seat in your boat, or this just makes for a perfect, uh, you know, if you're heading out for an evening with a buddy and just want to put six or eight baits, boom, you can throw them in there. You got your storage, side pockets, blah, blah. You can put a map, your phone in there, whatever. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about this. You should have one of these too for musky fishing. A headlamp, that's a definite necessity because they like to bite right before dark and of course after dark. Uh, so yeah, pedestal pal. Moving up, this is uh, kind of their entry level as well. This is the uh, uh, Muskie Junior, which as you can see, pretty much has got uh, plenty of room for a good chunk of baits like that. You know, you got your side pouches and whatnot. You got the tool holders on the front. That's kind of cool. You can take your pliers, you know, and you shove them in there. I mean, you're pretty much set. So that's the Junior. Uh, moving up, this is the Medium. This is one that we use a lot. And you see it's got all the tool storage. And what's really nice about these, they have interchangeable dividers here. You can lift these dividers out and move them around uh, to kind of customize your storage. Uh, it's even got little bucktail holders where you can hang the bait, uh, you know, vertically like that. 
Uh, let's see. It's even got, yeah, you can put your steel leaders in here or maps or whatever, your phone, whatever you want. Yeah, maybe not your phone. All right, so when you bump up to like the musky medium like this, another cool feature about these boxes, they are super strong, super sturdy. You can actually stand on these boxes. They actually become deck extensions in your boat, which is uh, pretty cool. You can, I mean, it doesn't matter what, how heavy you are, you can stand on these things. They are virtually indestructible and made in the US. I'll add that as well. Let's see, uh, got one other box here. This is a new box for them this year. This one is super cool. This is the uh, Magnum and check this baby out. We have waited for a box like that. There, everybody uses the Planos 3700s, 3730s, or what have you. It actually has got the dividers in here, so it keeps them from all collapsing on each other. And you know, you can put some, the big wide boxes like this, or the narrower 3700s you can throw in there like that. Or you could even lay the box down like that, you know, and grab the baits this way so that's an option too uh, pretty sweet box there it's got the tool holders on the side you know it's got a pouch on the side as well so that's the Lakewood Magnum uh, lots of options for tackle storage um, or you can just throw all your baits in a pile in the corner of the boat that works too what whatever works for you but uh, there you have it all right so you get to the lake you've got all these baits you got all this gear how in the heck do you cast this stuff out? Uh, you know, as Robbie said before, even his mom could do this and catch a muskie on one of these outfits. So we're gonna strap your lure on and let me show you here too. Uh, we use 130 pound fluorocarbon leaders that we tie ourselves. Uh, you can go to muskyshop.com and get some fluorocarbon leaders that they make as well. Uh, I would recommend uh, for sure 130. They even make them for uh, heavier up to like 200 or so for uh, the bigger rubber baits or stuff that they inhale. You can use wire leaders as well. We like the fluorocarbon because it doesn't kink. That's a big advantage. They can cut through this, but it's super rare. I've seen it uh, twice in, you know, like 15 years and, you know, a couple thousand muskies at any rate. So you got your uh, lure tied on there, snapped on. Um, here's another thing telescoping rods there's definitely if you're not familiar with telescoping rods you know how do, is it do you put it out for different actions no it's one position it's either all the way in collapsed or it's all the way out extended now we've got a nine foot rod obviously you're going to want to just line it up make sure the first guide is even with the reel whatever pretty self-explanatory but i thought i'd show you anyway um, okay, so now we're going to go through some casting. And let me add here too, when your line is fresh and brand new, um, or even the first cast of the day, your line is dry, okay? So you can't throw real hard right away. Um, what will happen, that line, once it gets wet and get the water on it, it actually creates a little drag. When the line is dry, it actually fires out way too quick. So never cast hard on your first a uh, couple of casts till you get the line all wet. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna wanna check is my drag. And basically, I'm gonna set this drag very tight, quite tight. I do wanna be able to pull line off. Oh, Robbie must have been fishing rubber on this one. We're gonna back it off just a little bit here. You wanna just barely be able to get a hold of that line and pull a little off, okay? And that's pretty much where we want it. Um, I will say I do set the drag typically lighter on say top waters or, you know, especially top waters, I like a lighter drag, but big bucktails like this, this is a number nine uh, single bucktail. Actually, I think it's a 10, but usually have it quite tight. So, and that's your star drag right here. Forward tightens, backward loosens. Uh, so just kind of test that and make sure you're good there. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is tighten my casting control knob forward basically all the way, okay? And what that's going to do is going to put pressure on the spool shaft that runs through the reel, and that's going to slow your spool speed down, and uh, it's going to prevent your backlash. Uh, obviously, the backlash is when the spool revolves too fast, 
that is going to slow it down for you. And obviously right now I've got it very tight. I turned it forward. I'm going to hit my spool release and you'll see my line is not coming out there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just slowly back that off. Make sure my line's not digging into itself there. Slowly back it off until the bait just starts to fall with a slight bounce of the rod tip. Like so. That's about where you really want to start out. And if you're really nervous starting out, maybe even tighten it a little more from that point. Um, but here's the biggest tip I can give you about bait casting reels. And what's really nice, the, the musky baits are heavy, so they kind of cast themselves. But probably the biggest tip I can give you is my thumb never leaves the spool throughout the course of an entire cast. So I repeat, my thumb does not come off the spool. So that way I'm feathering the spool, monitoring it with my thumb. I, if I sense that it's moving too fast, spinning too quick, uh, I can you know, uh, instantly add a little pressure with my thumb. And then the other thing you're gonna wanna do is right before the bait lands in the water, that's when you're gonna wanna stop it. Never stop the spool spinning with your reel handle. You will break it. That'll prematurely wear out your reel. If you have like a really heavy bait on, and engage the handle even accidentally you could blow your reel up and that would be the pinion gear that would fail uh, at that point but so i've got it there it's as soon as the bait hit the water the spool stopped i'll show you again sideways like this okay my bait is out of the water it's gonna fall hits the water and it stops pretty quick that's a good place to be. So once you get more comfortable with this outfit, uh, personally, I actually have this almost all the way turned off, like almost total free spool, and I re rely entirely on my thumb. And what that allow you to do is cast a lot farther because you've got less tension. But starting out, make sure you have that tension uh, pretty high there. So let's get casting. All right, so for the cast, uh, probably the, one of the biggest things to keep in mind if you're maybe more familiar with spinning tackle is uh, the release point of the line or what have you. You know, with the spinning rod, you release it uh, when you're almost pointing at where, where you want to cast. With a bait caster, you need to release it a little bit sooner than that. So keep that in mind. It's a little sooner release, but like I said, you don't actually let go of the spool. You just lighten the pressure of your thumb on it so it will still revolve. All right, so one thing I don't recommend is side casting musky baits. That's a good way to uh, hook your partner in the boat and he won't be too happy about that. So we are always throwing over our shoulder. And keep this in mind, if you're holding the rod in your left hand, holding the reel in your left hand, always go over your left shoulder. I see especially beginners wanting to go over their other shoulder that they're not holding the control hand in the reel on and that's like really wasted effort going across your body so make sure if you've got the reel in your left hand keep it on the left side of your head or your shoulder like that and always straight over your shoulder just like that all right so here's a thought maybe you cast right-handed uh, if you're just kind of starting out at doing this you know learn on whatever side that you would be fishing on so you're not swapping the you know the reel or rod combo to the other side you know a lot of people even though they use a right hand retrieve reel they throw right switch it over to the left that's like just wasted time effort energy um, so yeah whichever way is more comfortable you know the the tranks they do offer the reel and left or right hand retrieve um, more reels are made with the right hand retrieve. So if you can train yourself to start there, I highly recommend that. Okay, so currently I have this reel setting tight where that bait will not fall. This is, uh, let's just call it the beginner setting. And I can throw this thing out. The lure hits, the reel did not backlash. Did no problem, I took my thumb off the spool and it still worked fine. So that's a good place to start. Uh, another thing, I don't really like to get the rod way up over my arm. I like to keep it right in front of me, just like this. Basically, it's just one motion. Boom, boom, just like that. Not reaching back way over your shoulder or whatever you're doing. Just keep it all kind of contained in one little motion. All right, so like I was saying before, when that bait is, you're sending it out, make sure you stop that thing right before it hits. 
and that'll prevent a big loop in your line, say if it's windy or something, and you don't want that big giant loop in the line, um, it's gonna make your bait maybe not run right. So for this instance, I'm throwing a bucktail. Um, I'll get it in and show you again. So the thing with a bucktail like this, you have to hit the rod or jerk the rod to get that blade to start spinning. That's the biggest thing. And that's probably one of the biggest mistakes beginners make. You know, their bait comes to the boat and the blade isn't even spinning. Yeah, they'll, they might bite it, but probably not. So when my bait hits the water, stop it. I'm actually gonna jerk the rod and that'll get that blade spinning just like so. All right, so what's the right way to hold this thing? Um, you can palm the reel like you would a bass reel like that. Or if you got a bait that's got a lot of resistance, you can also hold it here. Technically, I actually hold it tighter under my arm than I do in my hand. And that actually saves a little wear and tear on your hand. So wherever choice, whatever position, whether it's in front of the reel or palming it, I'm holding it almost just as tight or tighter underneath my arm. Okay, so you kind of got the casting down. Uh, let's go into your boat side maneuver. All right, so the bucktail being one of the more popular, easiest baits, uh, let's go into the figure eight portion of a retrieve. So many of the fish will hit that first 10 feet of the retrieve or the last 10 feet. So working the bait, working the bait, a couple bumps here and there. There's no right or wrong. You'll catch them just straight reeling it. But I'm already thinking about coming to one side of my body. I'm gonna start on my left, stick the rod tip down the water, all the way through. See that nice, smooth, fluid, giant figure eight. All right, couple of the big mistakes people do here. They start their figure eight before the bait gets to the boat. They leave too much line out. If you got a bunch of line out, you cannot do a proper, whoops, figure eight. That bait is gonna stall on the turn, all right? So make sure you're within inches of your ball bearing swivel here before you start your eight like that. All right, so here's another common mistake. Cutting the figure eight too tight. All right, so you're coming in, coming in, and then double the bait back into its own path. No, food does not try to chase the muskie. You always wanna keep that in a, solid path of uh, uh, you know say the 90 degree turn or we call it the L turn you're drawing a letter L on the water okay and I actually am doing this before the figure eight all right so I pick the left side of my body to start I do my L turn I'm close to the boat as far as I can go and now I'm beginning my figure eight and always keep the middle of your figure eight right in front of your feet if you have the middle of it way to one side of your body, you're just gonna, it's not gonna be a proper eight. So always keep it right in front of your feet. You come close to the boat. And I like to come as close to the boat as I can without hitting it so I can reach out as far as possible as well. That will make your figure eight a lot larger. Very close, very far, back in. And I'm almost kind of using the rod like a joystick here. Just kind of go around like so. You'll see that was right up to the leader. That's so important. If you don't have it really close, you're really gonna struggle with this. So many of the fish hit within that last 10 feet of the boat. So you have gotta be on your game, not only watching your bait, you need to be watching the five feet of water behind your bait to see who's coming in behind it. Okay, that was a lot of information, um, but we have one more topic to discuss. Musky fishing, uh, getting into musky fishing is the easiest right now than it's ever been. Oh yeah. It's insane. The amount of resources that are out there, amount of clubs, the amount of lakes that have muskies in it right now is absolutely crazy. It's exciting. <laughs> this is the, part. the best chance ever for musky fishing is right now. Yep. They're in more lakes. Yep. Um, you can just like watch a video like this. Yeah. It's all out it's there. Pretty, it's pretty amazing. Uh, big thing that you guys can do is get involved in the uh, Muskie Zinc. Uh, join your club. Uh, this The best way to get into muskie fishing is going out with someone who is more experienced uh, than you. Um, there's plenty of people in the club that are more than welcome taking new people out. Oh, that, for sure. That's one of the coolest things you can do as an experience, a more experienced person in the muskie world, taking a new person out 
Getting catch their first catch muskie. Catch their first muskie. There is not a better thrill in the world than watching someone catch the first muskie. So, social media, social media, yeah, YouTube. I mean, you just name it. It's, it's all there. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that will ask, will answer your questions. Um, like on Facebook, there's so many different musky group pages. Like there's a musky fishing tips and tricks that we oh, yeah. and I are part of as well. Stuff like that. There's just it's just so easy to connect with people and get out on a and just learn musky fishing. Um, it's 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 insane. Maybe you don't have a boat. Well, you could definitely meet somebody that's got a boat, yep. and uh, I'm sure would be more than happy to take out uh, a beginner yeah, musky exactly. angler for sure. So it's pretty insane. We live in a pretty exciting time for musky fishing. Um, but yeah, that, I think that covers all the bases of beginning musky fishing. I'm sure we'll be doing more videos like this where we'll actually dive into the different lure styles and how to fish them. And as far as how to fish them, it's all just opinions. Yeah. <laughs> it all, if the lure's in the water, it can get it eaten. It is food. So there, there's no right or wrong, but uh, we'll do another video later on uh, techniques of the different lure categories. Guys, thank you so much for watching this probably rather long video, um, but I think it's a worthwhile topic to get more people into musky fishing. You guys um, wanted it, yep. here it is. Here it is. Uh, thank you everyone for the continued support. Um, Try and do a, mu a musky YouTube channel. It's been pretty fun, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, we just hit 35,000 yep. subscribers. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, please, please. go down, press yep. that little red button, hit the ding for the notification. Yep. You'll know when we put out a new video. So, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next episode.